Yes, sir. <laughs> So do they seem to get used to you at all? Nah. They don't. It just, it just depends on the the um, genetics of the queen that that was the mother queen for the for the, for the queen cell. You can see that they're getting kind of flighty here. There may not be a queen in this one. This right here is the, that little container that I put the young larva in mm -hmm. and then uh, they develop this into a queen cell and then she emerges from that and uh, wow and then goes out and gets mated let me put my glasses on see if we can see any eggs at all Sun just right. I can't see very well right now. Looks all like honey from here. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking deep down in a lot of times. The the egg looks like just a miniature rice. You know, it's just it's real white. And um Probably about, I don't know what the length of them are, but it's just a millimeter or so. Huh. And and the thing is, is about 30% of the queens don't make it back because they wind up as as um, dragonfly food. Or, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> or, or birds or something. So about Circle third, of life. Yeah, so about a third of the queens that you raise don't make it back properly uh, you know either properly made it or or make it back at all but i don't i don't see any eggs in this one now i know from my end of it uh anytime i've gone into a house where one has been removed uh -huh. uh, of course it smells like honey like crazy yeah. um, because a lot of homeowners will make the mistake of going in there and trying to kill the honeybees yes and once they're not flapping their wings that's right. That, you know, all that uh, all that honey comes out and runs in the walls and makes a huge mess. In the summertime, when it's 100 degrees, or in the wintertime when it's zero degrees, they maintain the temperature of the hive 90 about right at 94 degrees. Okay. And and once you kill the bees, you get rid of that, <clears throat> and the wax melts, the larva dies, uh, and and then you have a a uh, large attractant for um, cockroaches, uh, uh, ants, my, ants, big time. mice. You know, and, and so that's why it's never a good thing to kill your honeybees that are inside the wall. It's just not. Call a beekeeper. Yeah, call a beekeeper. The problem is, it's going to cost you some money. But even if you called a pest control person and they were willing to kill the bees, it's going to cost you some money. And some troubles. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and later it's going to cost you major trouble because a lot of times you're going to have to cut that wall out anyway just to get rid of the mice, the wax, the honey. the Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a mess. And it'll smell like honey for years and years and years. Yeah. Let's see so what's the purpose of the glass jars? That was when they, were, when they were just getting started, when I had just put them in there, I wanted to give them some extra feed, which is just a, a sugar, sugar water combination. These are a whole lot more calmer than that one. So that 
indicates that probably there is a queen in here. And so this might have been part of that 30%. That hive might have been part of that 30% that did not make it back. So they get agitated if they don't have a leader. If they don't have a leader, they <laughs> do get agitated. Now, the interesting, beautiful. the interesting thing is these big ones right here, those are the males. Uh -huh. Those are called drones. And they do not have a stinger. Mm -hmm. You can just put them in your hand. You can really freak somebody out and put it <laughs> one in your mouth, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> let's see, let's put this here so I can shut this down. So I get calls a lot with people freaking out because they've got bees all over their bushes. Uh -huh. And I most of the time know what I'm getting ready to go look at, where they're just pollinating. They're just flying around. Um, sometimes it's hard to convince them that there's no reason to do anything yeah and that, if, if you do it could affect you know several aspects you know they they do help us out yeah they, they are well they're pollinators you know and so if you have a bush that's out there that's uh, that pollinates for them i've got my glasses i'm trying to see if i can see some eggs in here i think they're so small, even with these glasses, unless I've got good light, it's hard for me to... Yeah, okay, I see some eggs in there. I don't know if you can get in the camera or not, but right in there, there's yeah. some little... See those little white things right in the center? Right there. Yeah. Looks like a little bead of rice that... Uh, uh, it's smaller than rice, but it, you know, it's, just, it's real white like rice. So that tells me there's a queen in here, and... Without disturbing them too much, we'll see if we can find the queen. I'll show you that. Oh, that'd be awesome. I don't need those anymore. Gosh. Now you identify her by her size. Yes, her her abdomen is much larger. There's some cells. Yeah, that's that's honey right there that they, they capped cap. off. Uh huh. There she is right there. Oh, see how see yeah. how much different she is. Yes. Sir. A little bit longer abdomen. Uh huh. The thorax is a little more pronounced. Uh oh. <laughs> They're getting interested. Uh oh. <laughs> anyway, so got close to the queen. That one's got a queen and got eggs. So this is a good one. So how long will it take them to do everything they're going to do in one of these boxes and uh, it's time for you to get the honey out? Um, I'm just shaking those off because when I lower this down here, they're puffed up over. Mm -hmm. And, and it will, uh, I'll just roll them over and kill them. But if I shake them, it doesn't bother them, it doesn't make them mad generally. <laughs> here's your, here's your drone. Ah, <laughs> he's getting me. Yeah. There's your drone right there. See how much bigger the eyes are, and the thorax is much, much fuzzier, and then the abdomen is bigger around. Okay. And so their only primary purpose in the circle of things is to mate with the queen and they don't mate with the queen inside the hive they fly out about a mile away and the queen flies about two or three miles away or maybe even five miles away so that she doesn't inbreed with her own drones oh really yeah so after that happens what, what what's his purpose he dies i mean what a life. <laughs> yeah, his, his reproductive organs get stuck in the queen, get pulled out, mm -hmm. and then just like a female bee, which is kind of like the their workers, stingers. It's like their stinger, and once they sting, they die. Unlike a yellow jacket whose stinger is not barbed, yep. and they will sting you multiple times and enjoy every time they do it. <laughs> Those are called sky jalapenos. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Anyway, so that's that's what I'm going to do with the all of these smaller ones. Are um, 
have new queens in them that I just raised, and so this one looks successful. This one does not. So is there anything you can do to, uh, besides the larva in there, to push that along? Mm. To encourage, encourage a queen? No, I just, I, I, I do the, the grafting part. I put the queen cell in there and then I wait about three to four weeks. And then after that point, I either move that queen into one of my other hives that I want or I sell the queen. Okay. So I sell the queens and the, and the, the, what they call a nucleus hive, which is, which is a hive like this. It's built up very strongly. And do you sell the honey? I do sell the honey. So how would somebody get a hold of you? Just call my number or Facebook or text me. Okay. Yeah. Sounds or, like or a plan. Or if you see me driving down the road, I've got a local honey on the side <laughs> of my car. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. thanks for the education. Oh, sure. Sure. Enjoy. For certain, there is no stopping them. The ants will soon be here. And I, for one, welcome all new insect overlords. I'd like to remind them that uh, they trust this TV personality and it can be helpful in rounding up others to toil in their underground sugar caves. So. I stand upon my desk to remind myself that we must constantly look at things in a different way.